Hi everyone, it's Liz, the Frugal Libertarian from frugallibertarian.com, and today I wanted to talk to you about ANCAPs and ANCOMs. Now, if you've never heard those words before, don't be surprised. This is something that's really only talked about in online political circles. An ANCAP is an anarcho-capitalist, basically a person who believes politically in anarchy and in terms of the system that's in place around them, they want capitalism. Their opposing side is the ANCOM. Now I didn't even realize ANCOMs existed until really recently. Um, basically it's an anarcho-communist. Basically the idea that no government and the people will keep themselves in a communist fashion. These are basically the people who sit there and will say, well, communism doesn't work um, in the real world right now because we always need a top-down government to do it. So if we were doing it correctly, there'd be no government at all, and then communism would function and be correct. Um, they are two very opposing ideas. Very opposing. Very, very. And actually, one can exist within the other while the other cannot exist within one. First of all, the word anarchy gets a really bad rap in, mo in the modern world. I think when people were punk rockers and they started saying, like, you know, anarchy in the UK, and you started seeing red circles with A's with the giant, you know, line going through them, the anarchy symbol being graffitied, the idea became this sort of radical and angry thing. You know, an anarchist is an angry person. The reality is it's not, and I, I hate to admit it, I am a more anarchist-leaning libertarian than I used to be, um, and I believe that's something that's sort of inherent in libertarianism when it comes to the modern world around us. And what I mean is, I mean, I saw this meme online, which I thought was really <laughs> actually quite apt, that said, what's the difference between a libertarian and an anarchist six months? Basically, we look at the world around us and we see, once you start realizing all the ways that the government has its fingers in your life, and the more you're fighting to get rid of those fingers, it's very easy to go all the way. That as they're pushing more and more into your life, you start to say no and push back and kind of say to the point where it's like, if you're going to try to completely control my life, then I don't want you at all and kind of push them away. And I think that's why libertarians tend to slide into anarchy. But the idea is that without some sort of giant overreaching government, people will learn to get along. That without this giant federal monster machine running over our heads, we will learn to respect each other. That we, it will not be one person turning into Negan from Walking Dead and taking over everyone else. Now the difference is the anarcho-capitalists it's, it's more of an organic thing. Both of them have the idea that if we were left to anarchy, humanity would branch into those two ideas. You would get the capitalist side, so the people who would immediately start making things to trade with other people, who would organize things in a way that they could barter and, and barter a service when they needed, and that the, you know, the ANCAPs believe that that's the way human beings will naturally be, that we will still have, you know, we would uphold our property rights, we would uphold the rights of the individual, and we would respect each other because we would need to in order to survive because no one person is an island. So the idea being that human beings naturally will get along and trade peacefully. The ANCOMs, it's the opposite. They believe that human beings work better in a group and that without an overriding government, human beings would naturally fall into a communistic lifestyle. 
basically the dream world that Karl Marx created, um, which has never functioned because there's always been some elite overhead government controlling everything. So they believe that that's how things would work. Now, here are the two problems with, with this and why the two of them kind of oppose each other, but not completely. The issue is there's room for communism inside of capitalism. There is not room for capitalism inside of communism. And communism, based on voluntary exchange, is really capitalism. Communism that isn't based on voluntary exchange requires someone forcing people into it. Now, there are some small historical examples of people coming together in a communistic way voluntarily. For example, after World War II, Jews who had been displaced by the Holocaust, people who had lost their homes, their families, their friends, everything in these concentration camps and had no one in their world and nowhere to go, went to what was then Palestine and joined together and lived on these communism type farms. So they would join together in these farms and kind of live as a extended hippie commune kind of thing um, and that seemed to that did work for them at that time it eventually was undone we also have the example in the United States of the so-called hippie communes that sprung up during the 1960s and there are some that still continue today there aren't very many um, but they did there are some that still survive now and again these are people doing this voluntarily so there is some kind of of a basis for an ANCOM to say people will naturally do this. However, the reason there aren't that many left today is because in full practice it ended up not really working out very well. Most of these communes end up dissolving, people leave because there's nobody forcing them to stay and then the people who want to stay are not enough to keep the community going. This is why, for large-scale communism, you need a gun. You need a gun pointed at people's heads to keep them going, because otherwise they don't, if they don't want to, if they're there and it doesn't work right, they're going to want to leave. And if, if they leave, you lose their manpower and you lose their talents, and then the community suffers, so you don't want them to leave, so you have to point the gun at them, and then suddenly the whole thing just falls apart on itself. Now, in capitalism, whether it is anarcho-capitalism or regular libertarian ca capitalism or even the crony capitalism we have right now in the United States, there is the both legal and possible idea of having a little tiny patch of communism exist. In fact, in a libertarian world, Nobody would care if there was a tiny little patch of communism here or a tiny little patch of communism there. Why? Again, it would be voluntary. However, it wouldn't be everyone. You know, on the whole, does it damage capitalism to have individuals voluntarily be part of communism? No. Does it hurt the individual to have everyone forced into communism? Yes. For example, the Massachusetts Pilgrims originally were together as a sort of social communist group. They did have leaders, but they said that they were not going to have private property. Everybody would have to work the same communal fields and have the same communal work everywhere. That, you know, if you needed your laundry done, someone else's wife would do it they would be someone in the community that would do that labor because they were going to work together as a group. And w what happened? They almost starved to death <laughs> because when people realized that they were putting in more labor than the person next to them and yet they were all getting equal reward and that the people might be forced to do things that they don't want to do, 
the whole system started to fall apart and nobody was doing any work. So then what happens? They say, no, private property, this field is yours, this cow is yours, this house is yours. Flourish or perish on your own. And what happened? They flourished. Because suddenly if they didn't do the work, they wouldn't survive. And what do we have? The plenty that gave us the first Thanksgiving. That's actually the way it went. It wasn't this whole love fest of you give us fishes, we give you corn, you show us how to do things. It was the first time they had plenty here because they decided to enact personal property rights. So we do have actual examples, real world examples of people attempting to do this sort of anarcho-communism and they don't typically go very well. In fact, a lot of these so-called hippie communes that have survived have adapted capitalist systems into their commune. Um, for example, there's one in upstate New York where they have a birth clinic where the women um, in the commune are all trained as midwives and they do this whole thing of natural birth and they do prenatal care and birthing there and they have a birth birthing center and they charge for it and that's part of how the commune survives is those women go out and run a capitalist business and the community survives because of it so that is why what those two terms are and the realistic expectation from either I don't know. I, I do lean more anarchist in my philosophy. I, I really have been pushing back because of the government pushing at me. I don't know. I don't know if I would be considered an ANCAP. I don't think I would. I think in order to have my rights protected, I'd need something to protect them. I just don't think that thing can be that big. But if, again, gun to my head, pick one, ANCAP, ANCOM. I have to go with ANCAP because it has a more realistic track record of work, working, just historically. So anyway, I never even heard of an ANCOM until very, very recently. And the more... I thought about it, the more it seemed to make less sense, because that's sort of been the downfall of communism, is not everybody wants to do it. And the people that don't want to do it have to be dealt with, have to be forced into it or silenced, at which point you need someone to be doing the forcing or the silencing, at which point you start getting a hierarchical structure, and then those people end up becoming the elites who don't have to stand in line for their toilet paper and potatoes. So I just can't see that one working. I can't. I have more belief. Um, I think it's more reasonable that in an anarchist system that capitalism would win out in the end. Um, again, just judging by real world examples that we have of situations where there were versions of ANCOM going on. I just, I can't imagine it. I really can't. And I don't know if that's just a, a cynical side of myself, if it's a pragmatist side, I don't know. I just can't imagine people voluntarily, everyone voluntarily being like, yay, communism, let's all do that. And having it work and work for an extended time where capitalism was completely unnecessary. I just, I, I can't see it happening. So anyway, I am Liz, the Frugal Libertarian. My blog is frugallibertarian.com. If you have not done so before, please subscribe. Leave me comments. Which do you think would be a more possible scenario? Which do you think would be the scenario that worked? I'd be curious to see what you think and uh, get some discussion going. All right. Have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.